Today, let's delve deeper into the scoop we've got about Jason and Lucia, straight from the game's artwork and that initial trailer drop. Seems like Rockstar's shining the spotlight a tad more on Lucia this time around. Not to downplay Jason's role, but Lucia's getting some special attention, you know? Alright, so the trailer kicks off with Lucia finding herself in what appears to be a detention center, or maybe some kind of confinement. She's sporting the classic inmate gear and hanging out with a few others. Now, it's a bit fuzzy whether it's an old girls club or a mixed bag. But here's the twist. It doesn't look like your hardcore, maximum security joint. More like a temporary pit stop. Then we see this scene with Stephanie, a counselor at the place. Stephanie's having a chat with Lucia, trying to untangle her situation. Stephanie asks why Lucia's landed there, and Lucia nonchalantly responds with something like, bad luck, I guess. It's got me thinking, maybe Lucia's in for something minor. You know, the wrong place, wrong time scenario, or maybe a string of small time scrapes. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. So, Lucia's starting off in a bit of a pickle, but I'm itching to see how the story unfolds, how she got caught up in this mess in the first place. Rockstar's got us all on the edge of our seats with this setup, and I can't wait to see what twists and turns are in store for these characters. Taking a closer peek at Lucia in this clip, she doesn't strike me as too old or hardcore, you know? Surprisingly, she's not all cuffed up or tightly restrained while having a chat with Stephanie, the counselor at this place. Stephanie's vibe doesn't scream in danger while talking to Lucia, so maybe her time in jail isn't as intense as we might think. So, Lucia's got a date with jail at some point. But yeah, she's not going to be stuck in there forever, that's for sure. Let's shift gears to this artwork Rockstar's thrown at us. In that pic, Lucia's flaunting an ankle monitor. Now that's the kind of thing they slap on you when you're out but not really free. It's like they're keeping tabs on you, making sure you stick to a certain area, like your home turf or maybe a specific part of town, as set by the powers that be. Now let's dive into some wild speculation on how this whole ankle monitor deal might mix things up in the gameplay. Imagine Imagine navigating the game with that kind of electronic ball and chain. It's gotta influence how Lucia moves around or what she can get into. Maybe it restricts her to certain zones or forces her to lay low in certain situations. The possibilities are buzzing around my head. It's like a marker that says she's out of the big house but under some major watch. You see, when you've got one of those strapped on, it's like a 24-7 reminder that you're under strict scrutiny. It's like a digital leash telling you, hey, no funny business or else. Now think about how this could shake up the game's map dynamics. Rockstar might play a throwback card to the old GTA vibes, where you're restricted to certain parts of the map at the start. As you progress through the story, you gradually unlock more turf to roam. Picture Lucia, stuck in a zone until she can shake off that monitor, whether she manages to ditch it by some gutsy escape or someone legally gives her the green light. Fast forward a bit and we spot Jason and Lucia in a pretty dicey scene. Jason's in the driver's seat, Lucia's riding shotgun, and they're peeling away from what looks like a scene post crime. A couple of cop cars are hot on their tail, lights flashing and sirens blaring. Jason's got his hands tight on the wheel, sneakily glancing at the cops as they whiz past. Then, when they're out of sight, he shoots Lucia a glance that screams serious concern. It's crystal clear these two are linked somehow, tied together by that ankle monitor and whatever legal trouble they're entangled in. How's that for a curveball in the storyline? There's this air of suspense and questions lingering. What did they do? And how does it all connect back to Lucia's time in the slammer? The plot thickens and I'm itching to see where this tangled web leads us. Let's zoom in on Lucia for a moment. You know, it's not giving off that classic jailbreak vibe. When you make a daring escape from the big house, you don't come out with an ankle monitor like you've been given a hall pass. Nah, it's more like you become public enemy number one, constantly dodging the long arm of the law. It's got echoes of that on the run feel from Red Dead Redemption 2, where you're always watching your back. Wonder if Rockstar's planning to revisit that kind of storyline here? But here's a thought that's been gnawing at me. What if Jason's got this noble quest to keep Lucia out of hot water. Could be, but there's this lingering sense that they've got some pressing reasons behind these actions. It's like they're in this situation either by design or due to some pressing needs. Speaking of which, let's take a peek at the next scene in the sequence. You've got Lucia holding a bundle of cash that could make anyone's eyes widen, stacks of 20s and crisp hundreds. And what's she doing? Nonchalantly turning away from law enforcement? It's like we're getting a glimpse into the aftermath of a successful heist. And then there's this sight, both of them, dressed up with bandanas and masks, keeping their identities under wraps as they bolt out of what seems to be a rundown corner store situated in the middle of nowhere. There's this air of confidence about them, but choosing a low-profile place like this hints at something. They're not doing this for kicks. No, it's like they're in dire need of funds. Now let's talk about Jason's wheels. It's not some flashy top-of-the-line ride like you'd expect from Michael DeSanta's swanky tailgater in GTA V. Nope, Jason's driving an older model, something more modest. It gives off this vibe that they might not be swimming in cash. 
The whole picture seems to paint a story of urgency. Lucia's holding a stash of cash, they're hitting a low-key spot, and Jason's not cruising around in luxury. It's like they're pushed into a corner, perhaps strapped for cash, and pushed into some tough choices. There's definitely more to this tale than meets the eye. Let's dive into Jason and Lucia's ride. They're cruising around, making these slick turns and slides. It doesn't seem like they're trying to dodge cops. You can even hear Lucia kind of squeal. She's gripping the car's side in a way that screams, thrill ride. Looks like they've got a pretty upbeat and tight relationship. They're heading towards a motel. And guess what? Surprise, surprise, they're more than just partners in crime. Yup, Jason and Lucia are romantically involved. Now, Rockstar's not laying it all out for us, but you can pretty much read between the lines. Now, let's dissect this trust business. Feels like Rockstar's planting seeds for the storyline's ending. Trust can either be kept intact or shattered, right? It's like a pivotal point in a tale of two partners in crime. Maybe they'll face a dilemma where they have to choose between both making it out alive or going for a massive score, but someone doesn't make it to the finish line. Trust seems to be the crux of it all. And here's the kicker, the final scene. They kick open the door of this corner store, all confident, guns out, ready to hit the jackpot. The story concludes on that note. Now, let's switch lanes and talk about the trailer's song choice, Tom Petty's Love Is A Long Road. Interestingly, there's a tweet from Tom Petty's account expressing gratitude for having their song featured in GTA 6's first trailer. The song itself talks about the struggles of maintaining a relationship, how it's not a smooth ride, but worth the effort. So GTA 6 might just be more than a crime tale. It's shaping up to be a love and trust story. I think Rockstar's aiming for their twist on a Bonnie and Clyde vibe with Jason and Lucia. That's pretty much all the scoop we got about them in the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer. They didn't spill much, but we kinda got a glimpse into their journey, the hurdles they face, and this theme of trust that seems to run deep in their story. There's this one scene where it looks like they're gaining some traction in their journey. Jason's driving, Lucia's standing up in the passenger seat, and some paparazzi or somebody's snapping their pics. Seems like they've leveled up from their clothes to the car they're driving. So, at some point in the story, they might hit some highs. But knowing how these stories go, it could all come crashing down by the end. So, that's pretty much the lowdown on Jason and Lucia, our main characters in GTA 6. Can't wait to dig into their stories more. What do you folks reckon the GTA 6 plot's gonna be like? Which character are you stoked to play? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't been keeping up with the latest news on GTA 6 in the past year, you might be surprised to learn just how much information has surfaced. Let's bring you up to date. Here's a rundown of everything we currently know about GTA 6. First, let's talk about the game engine. Developers have made significant tweaks to the Euphoria physics engine, enhancing ragdoll physics and overall game physics compared to GTA 5. Additionally, they're incorporating lighting and skybox systems, akin to those seen in Red Dead Redemption 2, promising improvements like volumetric clouds and better lighting effects. Notably, leaks also hint at advanced weather systems, with heavy fog making an appearance, a feature less prevalent in GTA 5. Moving on to characters, while the main protagonists are Jason and Lucia, Leaks have unveiled additional character names. Alongside Dre, who's distinct from Dr. Dre, there's Sam, a friend of Dre, and others like Kai, Wyman, Billy, Tit, yes, that's the name, Zach R.B. Shaw, Vicky, Iris, Shanice, Booby, and YJ. Surprisingly, we even have details about their heights in the game, with Lucia standing at 5 3 inches and Jason at 6 1. Wait, regarding the setting, we know of three different gangs in Vice City. San For San, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the far-right militia. These details paint an exciting picture of what to expect in GTA 6. We're also privy to a variety of items and tools in GTA 6. Among these are the auto-dialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, cutoff tool, painkillers, pool cue, trauma kits, golf driver, food and drink, golf putter, USB drive, golf iron, crowbar, golf wedge, torch, slim gem tracker, jammer, duffel bag for looting, cigarettes, and a loot backpack. Furthermore, there's a confirmed list of weapons including a rocket launcher, assault rifle, baseball bat, polymer pistol, knife, bolt action sniper rifle, Molotov cocktail, spear gun, which is intriguing, smoke grenade, compact SMG, flashbang, micro SMG, sniper rifle, heavy machine gun, auto rifle, and pump action shotgun. The weapon wheel, much like in Red Dead Redemption 2, will be divided into three sections. Weapons, equipment, and gear. It's interesting to note that players can hold different weapons in each hand, with a quick item inventory displayed in the bottom left corner of the screen. While leaked recreations of the weapon wheels offer a glimpse, it's likely that the final version may evolve as the game progresses in development. In one video snippet, an NPC is seen firing at Jason, prompting a health tip 
to appear on the left side of the screen when Jason's health drops. If you find yourself injured in GTA 6, your health will regenerate slowly over time. To speed up the process, you can access your weapon wheel and use a recovery item. In GTA 5, health only regenerates up to 50%, requiring snacks for full recovery. It seems in GTA 6, you might naturally regenerate to full health, albeit at a sluggish pace. While not confirmed, it's implied that using a medical item will hasten the healing process. As for open world activities, there are seven confirmed ones so far. Dice, golf, fishing, races, adventuring, shipments, and delivery van events. One video reveals a delivery van event near Port Gellhorn's industrial area, where security cameras are active, adding a layer of challenge to potential robberies. Speaking of which, robbery events are highlighted, notably the Hank's Waffles heist, where Jason and Lucia execute a daring robbery. Other clips suggest Jason possesses an ability, allowing him to perceive through walls. Additionally, there are events centered around searching vehicle trunks for either valuable items or nothing at all. Lastly, delivery and pickup warehouse events are mentioned for Port Gellhorn, although specifics remain unclear. In terms of accessible buildings, GTA 6 promises a plethora of options including the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, Jack of Hearts strip club, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundries, enhancing the immersive experience. Let's delve into the multiplayer aspect. In a leaked clip from GTA 6, we observed a multiplayer session with a player count displayed as PL2 of 32 inches in the bottom left corner. This indicates that there were two players present in the lobby out of a maximum capacity of 32 slots. It's reminiscent of Red Dead Online and GTA Online, where the stated capacity is 32, but practically it's 30 players plus two additional spots reserved for spectators. While it's hoped for larger lobbies in GTA 6, during this testing phase, it seems they were experimenting with 30 player lobbies. Moving on to collectibles, there's mention of Wyman car parts. In one clip featuring Lucia, a developer is seen placing a cardboard box with a circular icon, signaling its lootable nature. The debug text on this box indicates it as collectibles car parts and Wyman car parts boxed generic used, hinting at the possibility of collecting car parts, potentially related to a character named Wyman, who speculations suggest shares an interest in classic cars with Jason. Regarding collectible hats, there's footage of Jason in an apartment, where a developer interacts with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat, according to debug text, hinting at clothing items being collectible ambient features within the game. Additionally, a compiled list of all brands featured in the game is provided, with acknowledgement that while some may hold relevance to the story, many may not. For convenience, the list is displayed on screen, allowing viewers to pause the video for further inspection if desired. Now let's explore the array of confirmed animals in the game. We'll encounter snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, waiting birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and whales. While these are the animals confirmed thus far, it's likely we'll encounter even more upon the game's release. These are just the ones we're aware of currently. Additionally, numerous new mechanics have been uncovered. You'll have the ability to walk while in cover, a long-awaited feature allowing players to go prone, marking a first in GTA gameplay. Loot bags will enable the storage of additional loot, and dropping and picking up weapons will be possible. There's a new under-fire animation where characters cover their faces during combat, along with the option to self-revive after taking heavy hits. Other notable mechanics include the ability to switch shoulders while aiming down sights, grappling during fistfights, and the introduction of buddy comms and a buddy ping system. This system, likely shared between protagonists Jason and Lucia, remains intriguing, with its full functionality yet to be revealed. Additionally, a new cover mode is introduced, altering the way shooting from car windows is executed. Characters will now fully exit the window, enabling full 360-degree shooting. Moreover, there's a new ability system, possibly exclusive to Jason, allowing for a form of wall perception. Whether Lucia will possess this ability remains uncertain. Players can also interact with more objects and NPCs, engaging in actions like carrying bodies, robbing, threatening, and conversing during robberies. Furthermore, the ability to pick up additional items like beer bottles and cans enriches the gameplay experience. Let's delve into some of the exciting new gameplay systems. Firstly, we have Money Laundering, which was hinted at during the Hank's Waffles robbery. An icon tracked to the car wash property displayed a washing machine with a dollar sign indicating potential money laundering opportunities. This suggests that properties could be purchased with the aim of laundering money, 
although specifics on how this will work remain undisclosed. Nonetheless, it seems players will once again have the option to purchase certain types of businesses for illicit activities. Fences, not the ones you jump over or drive through, but rather individuals involved in illegal transactions, are confirmed to be in the game. A fence acts as a middleman, buying illegal items from players to resell them to others. Hacking will also play a role, with Lucia seen carrying various hacking tools, although it's uncertain if Jason will have access to these items as well. Previous leaks hinted at Lucia's role as the designated hacker, but only time will tell. Pragmatic, cool and chaotic romantic are different event types mentioned in the events list. Players will also have the ability to command the other character during a robbery. In leaked footage, a tip prompts players to check in with Jason, or hold for more options, indicating the potential to issue commands to your partner during a heist. This feature should streamline gameplay, allowing players to effectively control both characters simultaneously. Let's dive into the AI witness system and police recognition feature, which is quite significant. In the Hank's Waffle robbery video, Beneath the Wanted Level Stars, there's a mention of full description, suggesting that witnesses have detailed information about you. This implies that once identified, the police will recognize you. When Lucia enters a police vehicle, there's initially no vehicle description, but this quickly changes to a full vehicle description. This indicates that law enforcement will have detailed information about your vehicle. Moreover, the text warns that any vehicle seen entering will be noted by the authorities. This suggests that even after losing a wanted level, if spotted again in the same vehicle, the police will pursue and apprehend you. During the robbery scene, Jason is shown attempting to prevent customers with yellow icons above their heads from calling the cops or fleeing. Additionally, a female NPC inside the diner exhibits similar behavior, with her icon flickering as Lucia leaves, turning red when surrounded by cops, and then fleeing upon spotting Lucia. These advanced NPC systems indicate a more sophisticated interaction model. Regarding item sharing, Jason and Lucia appear to be able to share items between them. For instance, in one clip, Jason steals items from containers, keeping some for himself while sharing others. Unlocking doors and gates is also demonstrated, as seen in a video featuring Jason in the San for San area. Debug text indicates locked door panels, implying the need to unlock specific doors and gates. Moving on, let's delve into the plethora of new features, spanning two full pages. Firstly, there's an enhanced AI system, exemplified in a video where enemy AI targets Lucia when she turns around. These AI adversaries showcase improved decision-making, adjusting their shooting strategy based on the circumstances. Notably, they dynamically alter their position concerning nearby objects, hopefully avoiding frustrating, head-glitching tactics. Additionally, they exhibit more tactical behavior, like lowering their profile during reloads and strafing left to right while firing. NPC behavior has also received an upgrade, with groups of AI no longer wandering solo, but instead moving in clusters, reminiscent of Red Dead Redemption 2's feature. This is evident in a video, where Lucia encounters a group of tourists, chatting as they pass by. This adds depth to the pedestrian dynamics, as previously seen in GTA 5, where individuals roamed independently. Now, expect to see various groups, and even couples strolling together, enhancing the game's immersion. A new feature allows players to surrender to the police during a robbery, introducing an intriguing dynamic with yet-to-be-revealed consequences. Additionally, players can purchase gumballs from vending machines, possibly serving as a health boost, although details remain speculative. Similar to GTA V, your character's attire will become soiled over time, adding a layer of realism. Furthermore, glimpses of Jason in various states, with different hair lengths and facial hairstyles, hint at a hair growth system akin to Red Dead Redemption 2's feature. This seems highly probable given the game's lineage. In terms of sustenance, players can consume items directly from their inventory. In a gas station scene, Jason adds wine, soda, and fruit to his inventory, indicating the ability to eat and drink on the go, similar to mechanics seen in Red Dead and GTA Online. Introducing a new event type known as a cop trap, which will be strategically set up in various locations. The confirmed locations are displayed on your screen. This indicates that law enforcement will deploy different tactics to ensnare you. Alongside this, there's a new police system known as Time Until Cops Dispatch. Now, when you commit a crime, the police won't immediately appear. Instead, you'll have a brief window to evade capture before law enforcement starts converging on your location. Security cameras play a role in surveillance, but their functionality differs from GTA Online. Instead of instant detection, there's a detection meter akin to games like Payday 2 or 3. 
As the meter fills up, you'll need to break line of sight within a certain time frame to avoid detection. Players will also have the ability to restrain NPCs, primarily through zip ties, as seen in leaked footage. This feature adds a new layer to robberies, allowing for more control over the situation. Furthermore, players can loot vehicles, as shown briefly in the Hank's Waffles video. A button prompt to examine SUV appears, suggesting the opportunity to inspect random vehicles and potentially pilfer valuables from them. In GTA 6, expect an enhanced car hijacking system. For instance, the presence of the immobilizer bypass suggests that stealing luxury cars will be more challenging. Additionally, an item called a Slim Jim will be utilized to unlock older vehicles, indicating increased difficulty in car theft. Moreover, there are events that allude to the possibility of failing to steal a car, with distinct scenarios like steal car in progress and steal car fail, showcasing potential mishaps. Two intriguing events, carjacking dash cat and carjacking dash advanced AI, hint at further complexities in vehicle-related activities. The game boasts improved vehicle damage and handling, evident in clips where car crashes exhibit more realistic effects, such as front fenders splitting apart and car hoods bending realistically. Furthermore, car interiors now feature a functional GPS and waypoint system, enhancing the immersion, especially in first-person driving. Additionally, players have the option to enter a car from the passenger seat, adding a touch of realism to the gameplay experience. Considering these details, it's evident that GTA 6 prioritizes intricate design elements, as evidenced by the meticulous attention to detail throughout the game. In GTA 6, Expect to encounter raccoons scouring through trash cans and pilfering food bags. This is evident in the game files, where three world events, Raccoon Climb Out of Garbage, Raccoon Rummage Trash, and Raccoon Steal Food Bee are documented. While there are numerous intricate details to delve into, if you find this level of detail intriguing, you can find more information in the provided link below, specifically on pages 19 and 20. As for sound design, it's no surprise that sound will be more realistic in GTA 6. Weapon sounds are crisper and more authentic, with increased volume for a more immersive experience. Additionally, the impact of bodies hitting the floor will have a deeper thud, creating a more visceral effect. Police sirens will reverberate off buildings and environmental elements more realistically, while the sound of items will vary depending on the surroundings. For instance, if you're in a shipping container, sounds will echo more, adding depth to the auditory experience. Overall, these sound enhancements aim to emulate real-life scenarios more accurately, contributing to the game's realism. A while back, there was a significant leak revealing a plethora of potential world encounters, random events that occur as you navigate the game world. I've displayed these on your screen, and while I won't go through each one, you'll notice they're quite fascinating. From parking disputes to donut burnouts, protests, and even someone getting a concussion, these events add depth and realism to the world of Vice City. It's truly exciting to imagine strolling through such a dynamic environment where something is always happening. Take a moment to review them if you like. They're quite impressive. Moving on, we have an extensive list of every confirmed vehicle slated to appear in GTA 6 sourced from both the game files and leaks. I covered these in detail in a previous video, so I won't repeat them here. However, I've provided them on your screen for your reference. If you're interested in exploring the full list yourself, you can find them on page 30 of the document. We've got a plethora of confirmed locations scattered throughout Vice City and its surrounding areas. Naturally, Vice City serves as the main hub, but within its bounds, we'll find neighborhoods like Edgewater, North by City, Rock Ridge, Little Haiti, Vice Beach, South Beach, Washington Beach, and Key Biscayne. Additionally, there's Port Gelhorn, which seems to be a distinct city akin to Sandy Shores or Palito Bay from previous games. Other notable spots include Yorktown, Ambrosia, Sundown, The Keys, La Pearl, Red Hill, Lake Leonida, Hamlet, Stockyard, Homestead, Grass Rivers, Ikenfaka, Underwater Locations, and more. The attention to detail extends to each of these locales, with various mini locations nested within them. It's astounding how much information we already have about the game's geography. Moving on, the community has endeavored to piece together a map of GTA 6 based on the coordinates and locations gleaned from leaks. This rough map outlines Vice City at the bottom right, with Port Gorn positioned on the left. The top section of the map remains a bit mysterious for now. Nonetheless, this preliminary map looks incredibly promising, and anticipation for exploring its intricacies is palpable. Finally, the document wraps up with around 20 pages detailing places found in the leaks that align with real-world locales in Miami. 
This inclusion further underscores the meticulous efforts poured into crafting a rich and immersive game world. We're diving into an upcoming terrain system in GTA 6, brought to you by Rockstar Games. Additionally, we'll explore some cool graphics enhancements like ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting slated for the next GTA. The scoop comes straight from an official patent filed by Take-Two Interactive Rockstar's parent company. So let's kick things off by checking out the patent titled Method and Apparatus for Enhanced Graphics Rendering in a Video Game Environment. According to Rockstar Games, the rendering of real-time graphics usually happens in a pipeline setup like this one. At the core of it, the process kicks off by handling 3D vertex information, moving on to render pixel-level details like light color and shadows. In the current systems, one or more shaders are employed for this pixel-level rendering. These shaders are essentially programs that operate on the GPU. The challenge in rendering lies in finding the right balance between realism and detail, while ensuring smooth performance, aiming for that higher frame rate. For example, a virtual world should illustrate various terrains that mirror a number of lifelike geographical areas. Each of these terrains can provide unique interactions with a virtual character in the video game. By way of example, a virtual player traveling through sand or snow should leave footprints that are different than the virtual player walking down a concrete sidewalk. However, because of the number of various terrains that need be accounted for, and the unique behavior of each terrain, Conventional graphics systems do not have enough processing power to account for dynamic terrain and the associated interaction with players of the game. So, Rockstar Games developed a shader system for efficiently rendering various types of terrain with high realism. Let's take a peek at the system. The world level map, visible in the bottom right, outlines all the different dynamic terrains, such as muddy, sandy, grassy, hard ground, snowy, and more. Take a gander at this world level map showcasing the diverse terrains. Now, let's explore the various dynamic terrain zones within the game world. Using Red Dead Redemption 2 as an illustration, this world level map plays a pivotal role in determining the terrain that players or NPCs interact with. Essentially, it acts as the foundation to generate a trail map. Think of a trail map as a record of all the imprints left behind by characters, vehicles, and other objects, like the aftermath of explosions. Take this image, for instance, showcasing how the snow has been altered by the actions of this NPC. Different shaders of the shader system are used for different terrain types and with different trail map types. For example, basic terrains do not require special shaders, while shallow mud terrains can advantageously benefit from a parallax surface shader to efficiently show ruts and tracks in the terrain with a high detail trail map. As an additional example, deep mud terrain may use a tessellation surface shader to model the ruts and tracks in the mud. You might be aware that in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can leave realistic footprints in the snow and mud. Rockstar explained that they employ two shaders for this effect parallax maps, and desolation. These shaders create a convincing illusion of high-level deformation, where footprints appear on the terrain's surface. In reality, the surface is warped, but not physically deformed, ensuring a smooth and polished movement experience. In GTA 6, they're applying the same technique to bring an extra layer of realism. This will be particularly noticeable with explosions, firing RPGs at the ground, walking through mud, or driving vehicles through it, each leaving distinct tracks based on the terrain. RPGs, for instance, will create crazy on the ground. This adds a significant level of interactivity, making it feel like you're genuinely impacting the game world in real time. Despite it being an illusion, the result will be remarkably realistic, akin to the snow in Red Dead Redemption 2. To sum it up, this graphics rendering patent encompasses the dynamic terrain, ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting, all exciting new features making their way to GTA 6. Rockstar has invented and patented new graphics rendering systems, which aims to fix some of the problems of traditional graphics rendering systems to make graphics rendering more efficient, thus improving performance and allowing for better, more realistic, and more immersive visuals. Dynamic Terrain System. This is a system that records and creates trail maps which make it possible that terrains can be visually deformed when being interacted with in various ways. Players, NPCs, vehicles, objects, and explosions can affect the terrain. For example, leaving footprints or vehicle tracks in sand can be seen in action in Trailer 1. Explosions will leave craters in the terrain as well. It's also possible for certain changes to the terrain to disappear over time. For example, footprints and tracks in mud disappearing after some time since the viscosity of mud makes it return to its normal state after some time. There are different types of terrains, for example, muddy, sandy, hard ground, grassy or snowy terrain. Each type of terrain will react differently 
A sandy terrain will be more easily deformed than a grassy terrain, for example. In the initial part of our video, we delved into the rendering pipeline, which also incorporates a lighting stage. While conventional systems often utilize cube maps for pre-rendering lighting, it's worth noting that this is mainly for static elements. When it comes to dynamic characters, pre-computed lighting falls short in accommodating changes from objects within the scene. Although ambient occlusion can be pre-baked, it lacks the capability to update dynamically. Realism takes a hit due to this. Conventional systems often incorporate static lights to mimic reflected light, like sunlight bouncing off the ground and under a table. However, this static approach fails to update with changes in the light source. To address these challenges, Rockstar has patented new systems. Ambient Occlusion. This is a graphics technique that can be utilized in multiple forms to determine how light and shading are displayed on an object. It can lead to darkened areas, enhanced contrast, and improved surfaces due to this technology. This patent's Ambient Occlusion system offers some special advantages. Determined by either preset or randomized assets based on developer discretion, the lighting can greatly provide a new vision to world building to make certain areas stand out, akin to a real-life setting. Global Illumination Global Illumination is a graphics rendering technique that models how light is bounced off of surfaces onto other surfaces in direct light, rather than being limited to just the light that hits a surface directly from a light source, direct light. Rockstar system detailed in this patent uses a bounce map that is projected in a top-down fashion to determine reflected light off of the ground. This bounce map is then converted into a texture that provides an approximation for the expected bounce back of light. This simulates the effect that would be achieved rendering the multiple passes of lighting to account for the natural bounce reflections. The bounce map can then be integrated into the lighting pipeline. During this, a technique is used to determine the area that needs this extra pass for each frame. This way, only the visible and required area is rendered with this technique thus making it very efficient and less performance intensive. Overall, this provides many of the benefits of ray tracing without the computational expense. Ray traced global illumination will probably still be in the game. For example, Lucia prison clip in trailer one. This special system is just a way to render large scale global illumination efficiently. Now, let's touch on the final problem that Rockstar has addressed through this patent with conventional systems. Finally, as another example, to develop a rich and engaging game world, it is advantageous to populate the world with variations of similar objects. In other words, you do not want every simulated person, cow, gun, car, cart, ship, or animal generated in the game to look the same. Because the 3D model for many of these objects would be identical, variation was traditionally accomplished by creating different texture files to paint a different look on the object. For example, two variants of a cow model could be created, one with a texture to create a brown cow, and the other with a texture to create a black cow. These prior art systems created the desired variety at the cost of artist time, computer memory, and resources to maintain a multitude of different hand-authored variants for each in-game object. To combat this, Rockstar is introducing material tinting. RDR2 had a system that could tint the color of clothes to create far more variations on NPCs. This new patent is an evolution of that system and allows for creating of several in-game object variants from a single model. It can not only modify an object's colors, but other material properties, such as metalness and lighting parameters, or add additional layers to it, such as mud, snow, or dust as well. Envision the extent of customization that awaits in this game. Alright, so in the GTA 6 trailer, there's this moment where this girl in a white bikini gets everyone talking, debating whether she's Lucia or not. She's chilling near this pool, taking in the Vice City skyline, and then she turns around. And let me tell you, there's a bunch of stuff to unpack there. Her hair moves all natural-like, swinging around as she turns. She's got these big hoop earrings, cool purple sunglasses, glasses, rocking a purple lipstick, and check out those nails, French tips. Oh, and there's this bracelet on her left wrist that catches the eye too. Now, here's the deal. Some folks are saying, nah, there is absolutely no way that is Lucia, or it just doesn't cross anyone's mind. Their argument? She looks different from how Lucia appeared in other shots, especially in that jumpsuit, and during the whole crime spree with Jason. But hold up, there's a good chance that in GTA Online, customization's gonna be off the charts. Need a different haircut? No biggie, just swing by the in-game salon. Problem solved, so who knows? This bikini girl might just be a customized version of Lucia with a whole new look and vibe. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered.
Now, back to the video. You know, I'm pretty confident that it won't cause much trouble. Just like in GTA 5 or Red Dead Redemption 2, it feels like they'll let us switch up our characters' hairstyles again, which is pretty cool. Now, about this scene, it looks like it's happening at a totally different stage of the game. At the start, Lucia's all locked up in jail, doing those petty crimes and all. But in this snippet, she's looking like she's hit the jackpot. Loads of success and riches. There's more to this in the trailer, giving us a peek into what a thriving Lucia might look like. She's sporting a different hairstyle, dressed to the nines, hanging out in a fancy car with Jason behind the wheel. And to top it off, the girl's getting her photos taken by the paparazzi. Some folks out there are betting that this bikini girl is gonna be the face of Rockstar's marketing strategy. You know, just like how they've always had that iconic female figure in their marketing since the good old days of GTA 3. So, putting it all together, it really seems like this bikini girl is Lucia. From the style to the little details like the various hairstyles, everything seems to point in that direction. It's exciting to get these glimpses of what Lucia's different phases might look like in the game. Rockstar's been doing this thing with the promo girls for ages, from the early days of GTA 3 to the more recent GTA 5. You might remember them. The girl in the bikini holding the martini glass, or the San Andreas girl leaning over at the Vinewood sign with those shades. They've always had these distinctive figures for their marketing. A bunch of people are pointing fingers at this bikini girl, saying she's the new Rockstar promo face. But I've got my money on Lucia. Take a look at those birthmarks and accessories, those little marks on her face and arm. They're pretty similar to what the bikini girls got. Sure, some aren't super clear, but makeup or sun exposure could easily cover them up. And those earrings and bracelets? They match up pretty well with all the girls who look like Lucia, even if some shots might leave room for doubt? Like the one where she's driving that fancy car. I'm pretty convinced it's Lucia. Jason's checking her out. The accessories are a close match, and her facial structure lines up. Not to mention, her body shape, facial features, skin tone, hair length, and color, pretty much all of it lines up perfectly. In that scene, the way the bikini girl moves seems a bit forced, like she's intentionally flipping her hair or something. So maybe it's part of a mission, Lucia trying to blend in at some event to gather info, or pull off a heist. Or perhaps it's one of those moments where she's at the top of her game, all successful and loaded. Oh, and that bikini she's wearing? It's from the Santano brand, which first showed up in GTA 5. So, in GTA Online, we've got this whole range of clothing options, right? There are jackets, shoes, and some of them even parody luxury brands like Louis Vuitton, which is a real high-end clothing and accessories label. Now, some people are throwing around this theory that the bikini girl might be a returning character from the old GTA Vice City like Mercedes Cortez. But honestly, that's way off. Vice City was set in the 80s, and GTA 6 is gonna be in the present, like probably around 20 2023. So, the timelines just don't add up. Even though this bikini girl looks a bit different and acts a bit like an influencer, I'm pretty convinced she's Lucia. She's got those same body features and face structure as Lucia. And Lucia's a game changer as the first leading lady in modern Rockstar games. Before her, female characters mostly played supporting roles, or were just NPCs in GTA games, never the main focus. Rockstar tends to put a lot of effort into their main characters. The little differences like the sunglasses or lipstick don't bother me much. We know there'll be in game stuff you can buy, like accessories. And hey, being able to change hairstyles was a big deal in games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA 5. So I'm pretty confident that the girl in that white bikini on that Vice City rooftop is Lucia. But yeah, I get it, there's gonna be a lot of chatter and debate. Remember the crazy theories from past GTA trailers? Like people saying the homeless guy was Nico Bellic? Or that Michael was an older Tommy Versetti? It's always possible I might be wrong. But to me, it all seems to point to Lucia here. Let me know what you think about Lucia in the comments below. Is she really the white bikini girl or not. I'd love to hear your thoughts down there. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be cool. The GTA 6 community has just found some major clues left by Rockstar Games, and it was under our nose the whole time. GTA 6's Trailer 1 revealed a ton of new things about the game off the bat, but recently there's been even more developments that show off the GTA 6 main character story, Lucia. We learn a bunch of new things about her background, so if you're not interested in potential spoilers, this may not be the video for you. This information is directly from Rockstar Games, so this is the real deal. So getting into the details of Lucia's jail cell, let's focus on those newspaper clippings. I'll do my best to zoom in and enhance the image, but there are two distinct white clippings with black text. One of them appears to have a portrait, and I can only speculate that it might resemble a modern-day wanted poster. This could be showcasing the story of Lucia's alleged crime, accompanied by an image like a visual representation of what she's accused of. It's almost akin to a wanted picture that you'd find in a newspaper. This phenomenon isn't unheard of in real life. When people do something noteworthy or newsworthy, it's not uncommon for them to keep a record of it, like an article, and put it up on their wall as a sort of memento. It's like a snapshot of a moment in their life, even if it involves legal trouble. So Lucia might be preserving this particular newspaper clipping as a piece of her history, 
whether it's for sentimental reasons or perhaps as a reminder of the circumstances that led to her incarceration. Now let's broaden the scope a bit and draw comparisons to previous GTA protagonists. Take Michael DeSanta, for instance. His mansion has family photos on the walls. Franklin Clinton's house features similar personal touches. Even Trevor Phillips, in his trailer, has pictures that tell a story about his life. It's not just confined to the HD era. Even in the 3D era games, characters had their own way of leaving traces of their lives in their living spaces. This inclination to personalize living spaces is fascinating. In Lucia's case, the jail cell is an unexpected canvas for her personal story. It makes you wonder about her background, the choices she made, and the events that led her to that cell. Exploring these details could give us a deeper understanding of who she is and why she's in the predicament we find her in. Considering Lucia's attachment to those newspaper clippings, it raises interesting questions about her attitude towards her crimes. Perhaps she finds a sense of pride or even enjoys the bit of notoriety or fame she's garnered from her actions. Keeping those clippings might be her way of cherishing the attention or recognition she's received. The prospect of spending a substantial amount of time in prison also suggests that it could involve more than just a brief cutscene, but potentially a series of missions within the jail environment. Now, shifting our attention to the picture above the bunk bed, it's a bit of a visual puzzle. While it's challenging to discern details, on the left side, there's a guy with a drink in hand, donning a white t-shirt. Next to him is a woman with voluminous hair, and in the foreground, there's another figure. This composition raises the question of whether these individuals could be Lucia's family. The dynamics and connections between characters are often crucial in unraveling the narrative of any GTA game. Acknowledging my limited knowledge about jail life, it's uncertain whether inmates generally have the privilege of keeping photographs with them as mementos. However, in this specific scenario, it appears that Lucia can. This might imply that the prison depicted isn't a maximum security facility, given the freedom for inmates to keep personal items. While the setting is far from casual, it offers a level of interaction and mobility, allowing inmates to go outside, engage in conversations, sit at tables, and soak in sunlight. The orange jumpsuits signify their status, but the absence of being handcuffed to the ground suggests a certain level of relative freedom. In this context, the allowance of pictures and photographs could offer an additional layer of insight into the characters and their personal connections, providing players with a unique perspective on Lucia's life both inside and outside the jail cell. Taking a closer look at the latest image, which I've adjusted to bring out more details, there's another intriguing photograph. A guy in an orange shirt catches the eye, positioned alongside two women on the right. The one on the left appears to be sporting a hat and sunglasses, although discerning whether any of them is Lucia remains challenging. They could very well be family members, close friends, or simply individuals from her social circle. Amidst all the uncertainty, Lucia seems notably fixated on reflecting upon her actions and the community's response. Beyond this, it's evident that Lucia maintains a distinct connection with a specific group of people, as indicated by the presence of their pictures in her jail cell. It's not just about her individual experience. There's a shared history captured in those photographs, hinting at relationships that go beyond the confines of the jail cell. Directly below the image featuring the guy in the orange shirt and the other girls, there's yet another photograph. Although the details are obscured, the presence of someone standing in the picture is noticeable. Lucia is seemingly constructing a collage of photos, creating a visual narrative that serves as a repository of memories. These images might play a crucial role in not only grounding her within the context of her relationships, but also providing a semblance of continuity and connection to the outside world. It's worth mentioning that the footage I'm working with is the highest quality version sourced from YouTube, as Rockstar hasn't officially released it on their Newswire page. Despite being in 4K, the YouTube upload might introduce some compromises in image quality, so there could be nuances in the pictures that we might miss. Once Rockstar throws the official trailer our way, we're likely to get a treasure trove of additional details. But for now, let's roll up our sleeves and dissect the snapshots from Lucia's jail cell. Apart from Jason, there's another player in Lucia's story. Stephanie, the Leonid Department of Corrections representative. Picture a different scene, though. Lucia's cell is a far cry from Stephanie's office. In this particular shot, Stephanie's unmistakably holding down the fort in a black dress, center stage on the right. Flip to the left frame, and there she is again, donning a red dress on the right side. Behind her, there's a framed message teasing with, if you miss, but the rest remains a mystery due to some pesky screen glare. Now, let's make a full turn and voila, another Stephanie pick in the bottom right corner. This time, the backdrop suggests a domestic scene, 
perhaps with a partner. She's got on some bluish shades, slightly different from what we catch a glimpse of later. The background paints a more vivid picture, a collection of books, pamphlets, a conspicuous high visibility vest, and yet another potential newspaper clipping. Whether it's a routine thing or an anomaly, the jury's still out. So, what's the inside scoop on Lucia's backstory gleaned from her jail cell environment? Well, the state of the jail suggests it's seen better days. Peeling bits off the windows, hint at a place with some history. That initial shot with the barbed wire strongly implies it's not a newly minted spot. It's got the wear and tear of time etched into its surroundings. As we immerse ourselves in the intricacies of Lucia's life within the jail cell, the narrative unfolds as a captivating tapestry, each element contributing to the rich story. The subtleties, from the cryptic newspaper clippings, shedding light on her alleged crimes to the carefully chosen photographs, depicting relationships with family and friends, create a vivid and compelling portrait of Lucia's existence, both within and beyond the jail confines. The personal touches within her confined space evoke a rawness that harks back to the legacy of previous GTA protagonists. Lucia's jail cell, unexpectedly, becomes a canvas revealing a story that transcends the conventional GTA narrative. It prompts curiosity about her past, the decisions that led her to incarceration, and the intricate web of relationships that define her. The permission granted for personal items like photographs in the jail cell adds an intriguing layer to the storytelling, suggesting a nuanced sense of freedom within the constraints of imprisonment. Lucia's attachment to these items, whether they be newspaper clippings or family snapshots, beckons players to ponder her perspective on her own actions and the recognition she may have garnered. While we eagerly await the official trailer release from Rockstar, it is clear that Lucia's story is woven with complexities and mysteries that leave us yearning for more. The weathered appearance of the jail environment, with peeling bits off the windows and subtle signs of aging, hints at a setting steeped in history, amplifying the anticipation for the unfolding narrative. Thus, with these glimpses into Lucia's world, we find ourselves surrounded by a plethora of unanswered questions. When did she find herself behind bars, and what duration does her stay entail? Your insights are eagerly awaited in the comment section. If this exploration into Lucia's jail cell has piqued your interest, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Comment down below what you believe caused Lucia to go to jail. And did you spot these hidden Easter eggs in the trailer on your first watch? I'm interested to hear back from you guys. Thank you for watching. If you would like to support our analysis content on GTA 6, make sure to subscribe and leave a like.